welcome to Crafting at CCPL. Today we are going to learn how to make a crocheted granny square, which can then be used as a dishcloth or can be made larger as a baby blanket, or you can make multiples of these, connect them together and have a granny square afghan. So today we are going to learn how to make a granny square and all of its versatility. You remember last week in our first tutorial on basic crochet stitches, we made a little sampler with the single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet. So if you missed that video and you want to check it out, just click the little link, which is the little letter I over here, and that will take you over to that video. Today we are going to use what we learned by making these stitches, and we are going to create a granny square. Now I'm making this out of 100% cotton because I am going to use it as a, as a dishcloth. However, if you decide that you would like to make your granny square multiple times over, you can do it out of any acrylic yarn that you can get at a big box store and then hook all those granny squares together and you would have an afghan. And it's all composed of just learning two stitches. So um, let's get started. I'm going to get the camera turned around and we will begin. Now the crochet hook that I am using is a five millimeter. However, if you don't have a five millimeter, which is also an H or an US eight, you can also use a 5.5 .5 millimeter, which is also known as an I or a US nine, or you can use a six millimeter, which is also known as a J or US 10. So um, I'm using just the smallest of the three. Any of those will work with worsted weight yarn. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a slip knot just like we did last week. And that is created just by making a loop like that and pulling the yarn up through the loop like that. And then I'm going to slip my crochet hook in and just snug it up, not too tight, just, just snug up against there. Now to begin, if you remember our chain stitch last week, we are going to chain stitch seven times. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have seven stitches. We're now going to go back in through this first stitch, put our hook through there, grab the yarn, and pull it through both. What we've now done, just ignore this little tail here, that will get woven at the end. You now should have a little circle. Just like that. We're going to be crocheting into this little this little hole here. This is the center because we work from the center out. This is the center of our dishcloth or granny square. So now we are going to chain stitch three times. One, two, and three. Now, if you remember our double crochet from last week, we are going to double crochet twice. So we wrap our yarn. We're going to go down through this little hole here. Go down through the hole, grab the yarn, pull it back through. We now have three loops. Grab the yarn again, pull it through two. Grab the yarn, pull it through twice more. We now have a double crochet and our chain up. These are called posts. So now we're going to do it one more time. Going through two, going through two. You can see we now have three posts. Here's our centered loop and here is three posts. Now we're going to chain two. This is going to become a corner chain two. So we now have our center loop and we have our three posts and we have two chain stitches, which is our corner.
we now are going to do three double crochet into our center loop again. So we'll go one, two, and three. Now you can start seeing the square forming. Here is the corner, here is the side, here is the side. Now this tail where you began, you can kind of, as you can notice, I'm crocheting it into this loop as I'm going. I'm just kind of getting it caught uh, around the yarn and that's fine. That saves you weaving it in at the end. You can do either. So we're now going to form the next corner. So we're going to chain two. We're going to do three double crochets in through the loop again. There's one. And two. And three. There's our third side of our square. So we're going to chain two. Now again, we're going to do three double crochets through this center loop here. So we have one. Two and three. Now to connect our, our square together, we have chained those two stitches. We are going to count three stitches up from this beginning here. So we're going to go one, two, three. Here's that third stitch. We're going to put our hook through it, grab the yarn, pull it through, that stitch and then just pull it through that last chain stitch. We now have completed our first round and we have roughly a beginning of a square. We have these open chain sections which are our corners. So we are going to begin the second row. We're going to chain up three. This is our chain up or elevator stitch as I call it because it takes you up to the next row. Now if you look along the top you'll see these V stitches. That's what we are going to be crocheting in. You don't want to go in between these posts. I mean you can but you're not going to have enough stitches because we are going to be putting five stitches across here. So we have this one counting as the corner stitch. We're going to go into this next stitch right here and then a stitch here and a stitch here and then again in the corner. So we are going to double crochet and go into this first stitch. Go into the next stitch. You can see it right here. So if I can get it up close so you can see it. Here's the V on the top. Here is the V right here on the top and here's what it looks like underneath. You're going to go right in that little hole right there. And we're going to double crochet. Here's the next stitch right there. And we're going to go in that. And then we're going to do one stitch going through this corner hole right here. So we now have five stitches going across. We have our chain up and then we have four double crochets. We are in the corner, so we are going to chain two. We're going to do our first double crochet in the corner, just like this one was done.
Now we're going to go into each of these three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. Then we're going to go into this corner space here. And we have our five double crochets, which you can see. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to chain two, and we're going to do the same thing on the next side. There are five double crochets. We chain two. We're going to go five across here, one in each corner, and three in the middle. We'll chain two, and then we are going to count up the third stitch in the chain, or chain up, and slip the yarn, slip the hook through the yarn, grab some yarn, and pull it through both loops to join it. So here is our square. We've completed two rounds. The first round was three stitches across. The second one was five. The next row is going to be seven. However, our chain up is kind of moving in. It's not in the corner anymore. It's moving in by one stitch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to chain your three up. So now we only have four stitches on this particular row. We are going to this is going to count as one. So here's two, three, four, five. So you're going to do four additional double crochets. One, two, three, Four, so I have my four double crochets plus this one, which counts as the first one. So I have a total of five. Then I'm going to do one in the corner. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to do one in the corner. And then I'm going to go into each of these, which will be five going across. This is the only one that's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to do five going into these stitches. And then this is the first. Then we have five double crochets. And then we'll have another double crochet in the corner. So you should have seven across this side. Your chain up is going to gradually move across the square as you go. So you can see this one has seven. It has one in the corner, it has another one in the corner, and it has five double crochets in between. We're going to chain two and do the same thing around the next two sides. So pause the video and go ahead and complete these last two sides, and then when we get to where we're ready to join, I'll show you what to do next. All right, let's look at our square. We have seven double crochets, seven double crochets, seven double crochets, but here we just have six. We have five double crochets and our chain up. But as I said, our chain up is going to move. You'll see it in our next row. It's, it's slightly going to shift all the way around as we go. With each row, it's going to move slightly. So we need to add 
an extra stitch because we just have one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to have a seventh one. So we're actually going to chain two at the end of this row, and then we're going to do a double crochet in the corner and then join it to here, and that way it will have the seven posts that it needs. So we do one, two, we do a double crochet in the corner, and then we are going to count that third stitch up. So one, two, three, insert our hook, grab the yarn, and pull it through both loops to join. So now you can see we have seven stitches on each side. So we're going to chain up, and if you can look, you can see that when we chain up, we are now two stitches in on our chain up. So like I said, each round, it's going to just gradually move, and you just have to compensate with double crochets to equal the same on all sides. Each time we do a round, it grows by two stitches. So we have three, five, seven. So our fourth round is going to be nine stitches on each side, except for our beginning row. So let's get started with that. We will chain up three. We're going to go into our next stitch. We are going to have one, two, three, four, five double crochets, and then a double crochet in the corner. So we already have one that counts as our first. So we're going to go as far as double crochets go, we are going to do five before we reach the corner. So one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to do that corner double crochet. So now if we look, we have our chain up, which counts as our first post. And then we have a total of six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we know we're going to have nine, so we're going to be adding some more. But you can see right on this end here, you can tell pretty much where we're going to have to add those. One's going to be in the corner, one's going to go right here. So now that you're familiar with what you're doing, we are going to chain two, and you are going to put nine double crochets onto the next three sides. You will be doing a double crochet in each corner, and then you'll be doing seven double crochets in each of the stitches along the top. So pause the video and go all the way around and just stop when you get to this third side here before we do the join. We now have gone all the way around except for this last row right here. So again, we need to add two stitches to equal that nine. So we're going to chain our corner stitch, and then we are going to do a double crochet in the corner, and then we are going to get this first stitch right here. You can see it. We're now going to join. You're going to count that third stitch up, pull the yarn through both sides, and there it is. So you now have a total of four rows of three, five, seven, and nine. The next round is going to be 11 stitches. The round after that would be 13. So now that you understand the basics, um, you're always going to count your posts. You know that they're going to increase by two. So the trickiest part is this last round, and you're just going to count your stitches. Remember to put one in the corner and then add the stitches that were missed to equal that number. So I'm going to let you do the next two rows completely on your own. 
and come back when you have a total of six rounds going around. So we have four, so you're going to do the next two rows on your own. You should finish with having 13 stitches on each side. I have now done six rows. You can see that I have a dishcloth about the size of my hand right now. If you, can, if you would like your dishcloth to be bigger, you can continue in this same process to however, whatever size you would want it to be. For me, I like dishcloths about the size of my hand because I have small hands and big dishcloths just get in the way for me. So this is about the right size for me. It is roughly six inches by six inches. So, but like I said, if you would like to make it bigger, you could just continue. If Just remember each side would increase by two stitches each round that you go around. And your chain up area over here is going to continue to move across. Now, if you wanted to do something besides a dishcloth with this, you would just tie this off when you get to the size you want. You would tie it off and weave in your tail you know, the leftover yarn at the end, and then you would sew the granny squares together if you made a multiple group of them, and you would just stitch them together along this edge. And there's lots of YouTube tutorials on how to connect granny squares. But granny squares are very versatile. You could continue to make this large enough to make a square baby blanket just using this pattern alone. Or you can just use them like this as a dishcloth. You can as I said, make multiples of them and sew them together and have a granny square afghan to use up lots of scraps of yarn. So they're a very versatile um, technique. There's lots of different granny stitch patterns. This is just a very basic one. Uh, there's much more elaborate ones, and there's some that have more openings in the middle sections in here, but I thought this was a good one to learn. Now, one thing I did want to say to you is if you notice your squares, and I, I put a little pop-up caption uh, toward the beginning, if you are a tight chainer in these corners, like I tend to be, you could increase those chains from two to three. Um, I tend to, to chain relatively tight, so my work tends to curl up. So if you find that you're doing that, just increase your chains on the corners to three instead of two. Now, other things to check out is while the library is closed, the digital library is available and there are lots of crochet pattern books. Um, so go check it out if you want to learn more about crochet. So thank you again for watching uh, Crafting at CCPL. Next week, we are going to be doing diamond art and no, it's not with real diamonds. So it's a relatively cheap craft, but it is a lot of fun. If you enjoy paint by numbers, you will like it. So that will be next week's video. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button down below. It's the little red button. And if you click the little bell-shaped icon next to it, that will let you know any time that there is a video posted to this channel. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up.